Welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. I'm here with the Hood Sisters. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Yes, we have <laughs> Jen and Amy of Hutzpa Design. And I'm going to let you introduce yourselves because oh, you can fine. probably do that better than I can. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm Amy Hood. I have the longer hair. I have the tattoos. Barely. <laughs> I'm just giving them <laughs> descriptors. <laughs> um, and I'm wearing the yellow shirt. And I will try to stay seated in the same spots each day so that it's not confusing. Although right. maybe you will be tricksters. Right, or maybe we will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good luck with that. Um, I'm Jen Hood, uh, the other half of Amy. Um, I am also older. More professional. <laughs> no, just She's still my birthright, sportier. by the way. Yeah, oh. sportier yeah. apparently. Um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. We both. Everyone asks like who splits up what. We both do design. We both sometimes do bookkeeping. Um, we just yeah. We just do whatever. It's team effort. That. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. I bet you have great chemistry. We do. do Weirdly, we do. Oh, weirdly. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's a. Like, it's like we know each other well or something. Yeah, something like that. Cool. We have everyone in the chat. We've got Kevin, Britt. Leon, what's up? Leon! <laughs> Always shows up. Thank you, you know Leon, Leon as yes. well? Oh my cool. gosh, you know Leon? Heck yeah, <laughs> Everyone knows. Leon's about to be so popular on Instagram. Hey, Leon. Uh, go follow him, it's Mudflap. Leon is trending. <laughs> mudflap. Hashtag Mudflap. I'm embarrassed to say Mudflap. Why? <laughs> I'm not sure. What does it mean, <laughs> Leon? Take it back. Could you please tell us what it means in the chat? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So we are checking the Stuart. chat. Stuart! What's up, Stuart? Hey. We got Stuart, we got Jessica, Michelle, Osh, Ryan. Hello, hello. And if you have questions, for, um, Sarah, you're awesome. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Sarah. If you have questions for Hoodspa, please ask them because we have them for the next hour and a half. Um, answering questions, working on amazing things, and I am going to let you kind of talk about what you are going to work on. But first, I'll let you know, chat, that we'll be doing our giveaway in about 30 minutes. We'll be giving away some swag. It's very Yay. exciting. I'll show it very quickly. Oh, yeah. This is a little, like, love pack from these two. We've got letter little press. poster, letterpress, odds and sods pin, and the best thing. The book. The book. Yes, we wrote a book. Everyone was asking us how we started our own business and like how we price, how we do contracts and everything. So we put it all into there. Instead of writing two hour emails every day to each person <laughs> individually, we decided to write a book yes. about it. And so. now you can get it for just twenty four ninety nine ninety five. Yeah, somewhere around there. On our website. <laughs> about a quarter of a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So or you could win it. Here. Or you could win it. For today. Free. Yeah, That's so in the way. About Thirty minutes we're going to be doing our chat and win, so make sure you're logged in and active in chat before then. And then at the end of the stream we'll be reviewing some portfolios. Fun, I'm excited. Yes. Yeah, so if you have some graphic design work that you would like um, Amy and Jen to look at and give their thoughts, please send it over. Find more info on that in the portfolio review tab. Awesome. Cool. So, what you gonna be working on? Okay, so today we thought we would do what we love to do, which is logos and branding. Woo, woo, woo. Um, we actually have a live client that we're gonna be doing this with, and at the end of each day, We'll send what we worked on with you guys to Noah and Voda Films. That's the company. Mm. And they're going to give us feedback at the end of the day. They're going to send us a video with uh, their notes and their changes and stuff. So it'll be really fun. So today we'll be working on the logo, initial concepts. Um, we're going to show you how we send proofs in a proof deck. And then we're going to get their feedback, incorporate the changes, and then make some collateral pieces and secondary marks. And we're not doing that all today. We're just going to do as much as we can every day. And then tomorrow, the next day, tune in. Perfect. We're going to get some internet going, get connected to the web. And this is, I think, the first time we've actually had a live project, like a, a real client. Really? Going on. Oh my gosh, how exciting. Amazing. And I will get you some internet. Oh, thank you. Let's do it. And this is the real thing that happens behind Adobe <laughs> Live. The real deal. Mm hmm. Hello from Phoenix, Arizona. Hello, Amy Woodward. Shout out to the Amy's of the world. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> so true. Yes, this is a three day set, Leon. Uh, we'll have them until Thursday. And then right after this stream, we will be doing the daily creative challenge for Photoshop. So if you are a Photoshop newbie or you just want to learn some more skills, stick around from 12 to 1230. And then after that, we just have more graphic design goodness. We yes. have a jam-packed week. So I figured too, like I can show them first like what we're working with as far as who the client is. Should, yeah. we, should we do that? Let's okay. Do it. So we can hit my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our friend Noah Carlson. They do the most amazing um, film and like production work for like little about us stories for companies. Cool. Um, it's all videography. So when he contacted us, he was like, I just don't feel like my mark and my logo really like represents the quality of work we do. Because right. they've worked with like, gosh, let's go to their um, projects. 
Nixon and yeah. yeah, yeah, they've worked with yeah, Nixon, REI, REI Nike. Uh, look at that big client right there. Uh, <laughs> um, super super Airbnb. So yeah, they do like really <laughs> quality work, but um, you know they still have their kind of startup initial logo. So mm -hmm. they want a facelift, something that kind of reflects um, Noah. This is him up here. He's the the guy who started it. Um, they're mm -hmm. very friendly people, and every project they do, they really get to know who they're meeting with and tell mm -hmm. their story. So it needs to feel personable and kind of grassroots, but at the same time, it needs to be able to appeal to these more professional clients. Right. Um, so as with every brief, it's like, it needs to be retro, but modern. Mm -hmm. It needs to be like comfortable, but professional. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so we're gonna find that balance. Okay. Um, so this is kind of what we're needing to facelift here. Awesome. Um, so usually when we start, we'll put together a creative brief. Um, we call it our discovery session where we'll contact the client and we'll ask them all these questions like, um, what are your goals? Like, what do you hate about your current solution? What do you want the new solution to fix? Um, so I'll start filling this in um, while Amy's kind of working on her, her pieces. We're gonna be kind of like double teaming some things. But I think it's helpful for you guys to see, um, we always- And Gal. And Gal, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we always like to do the, um, the creative brief, not just for ourselves, but we have the client sign off on it as well because we want them to feel like really invested and to be on the same page with us from the very beginning. Right. So we'll all sign off on the fact that we want it to, um, you know, have these certain personality traits. We'll include some uh, inspirations. These are old ones, but I'm going to pop in the actual inspirations. Um, and because they sign off on this and we have all these visual references that we've all agreed on, that makes it so much easier when we go to the proof stage of me actually like sending him a proof file because then if he says something kind of subjective like, well, I don't know, I just don't like it, mm -hmm. I can take him back to the creative brief and say, well, we had these goals, this is our visual references and it meets all those criteria. So it really does fit the solution, but preferentially you're not really feeling it emotionally. Mm -hmm. So let's try and like bridge the gap, but also understand that like it is, fitting the solution. Yeah. So it helps you get much more clear feedback. Yeah, um, that's really smart because I think that's a huge stumbling block yeah. in the communication process, like mixing creatives with non-creatives or just different um, aspirations totally. and visions. Mm -hmm. Well, and sometimes you have to explain to your client, like you might not preferentially like it, but if it suits your target demographic, like, you know, who are we really serving? Yeah. Yes, like we want you to like it, but sometimes mm -hmm. just like things that are new are just unfamiliar. Yep. And it just takes a while to assimilate. Um, but it is hard because you want to create something new and exciting for a client, but a lot of times there's the tendency for clients to want to see something familiar that they've already seen because that's, you know, yeah. something that's comfortable. Right. So you're constantly kind of pushing, but you're also giving way. It's a definite negotiation. So, um, but Ames, do you want to show them some of your sketches? Yeah, let's go to the sketches. Okay. Oh. So if we go to my screen. I love your like master I know. over there. It's my secret. Like. Yeah. So I always, the first and foremost, whenever I'm starting a logo project, step one is always just brain dump in sketch face. So Jen and I sit down with two notebooks, pencils, and we just kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Right. And then we just kind of sketch anything and everything that comes into our mind. And then we'll go through and we'll kind of put asterisks besides like five or six of them that we really like the concept of. Mm -hmm. And then we'll kind of flesh those out and kind of see where that goes once we're actually in Illustrator and we can kind of see if it's going to work. Cool. So you are an Illustrator right now. Yes, I'm in Illustrator, which is my all-time fave. Oh, shout out. Number one boo. Yes, my number <laughs> one boo. Um, and so here are my sketches. And um, they gave me some inspiration that I'll show y'all. And it's kind of a lot of very different things. <laughs> the um, best. <laughs> yeah. Isn't this cute? I love it. I love that. So he sent me this, mm -hmm. but then he sent me this, hmm. which is quite different. Yeah. And then he sent me this, which is kind of a bit more like creative hipster. So he's trying to ride that line between creative hipster, um, hipster is the worst word, but it's just the word that we all understand for what that visual is. Right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> don't hate me. <laughs> um, and then he's also going to, he wants it to be corporate too though, because those are the clients that they're trying to get. People who have yeah. that creative lean, but have the money to pay for oh. what they want to do. Yeah. And then he sent me this, and then um, he sent me this, which was, uh, I think he was just kind of so flattering me a bit. But, um, <laughs> but then he Noah. also said those magic words, but just do you, because I really like what you do, which yeah. is both like enabling and, and terrifying at the scary. same time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You're like, how much of me do you really yeah. need? Do you mean it though? Do you yeah. mean it? It's just like when you're dating and you really show the true you. <laughs> yeah, Everything goes totally. To. But anyway, so this is kind of what I sketched up. I was trying to think the buzzwords that he used to me in our conversation was geometric, um, but also kind of like fluid and kind of a little bit, um, I don't know if it, sh it shouldn't be hand-drawn, but kind of a little bit fluid, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, 
The meaning of the word Voda, which is the name of their company, is water in Bosnian. And wow. he, when he was in college, yeah, they went to Bosnia on a, a film trip for his school. And he said it was just really eye-opening and it was just like a really amazing experience. And not soon after, he started his company and so he called it Voda mm -hmm. because he grew up in Southern California. Um, surfing has been a huge part of his life, him right. and his family's forever. And so um, that's kind of the imagery that we're playing with. So. You can't see it, but up here in the right-hand corner of my sketchbook, I always write notes. So I'll say like geometric, um, water, waves, um, um, eyes for seeing, mm -hmm. kind of like visual cues that I can have when I'm when I'm trying to trying to do my sketch phase. Yeah. So I kind of am I playing with the idea in these sketches of like sets rolling in, sets in waves. Um, lines, geometric sh shapes. The V is a really great geometric shape on its totally. own, so kind of hiding that in there. Mm -hmm. And so we've got this kind of thing that we're going with. Wow. So now I'm just kind of over here and I'm just kind of like, I've locked this layer. Mm -hmm. And I always love that. I'll just like put this illustration on lock a layer and then I'll just kind of start a new one on top. Yeah. And just start putting all my stuff right. on there. And what's your favorite way to go from this kind of rough pencil sketch to building your actual shapes, do you use like the pen tool? Oh, shapes on pen tool all the way. Okay. I mean, sometimes I'll use shapes. Like right now on this little um, kind of like sun mm -hmm. radial that I'm doing, um, I'm using. I just used a circle and I cut it up. Mm -hmm. And I'll start with that again. Actually, um, actually, I'll start with the pen tool. Sweet. So now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna start kind of this little V shape that I'm trying to get. And then I'm. I haven't been using it as much as I should. But the new reflect tool, oh yeah, I'm like I keep trying to remind myself to use it since it's there. Right, and it can just be perfect. Right, I mm -hmm. know because I usually just go um, object transform reflect, you know, and copy and pla place. Yeah. But let's see if I can figure it out. I love so the reflect think, tool. Is it great? Is it here? Mm -hmm. Where is it? It's under the rotate. There we go. Yes. And then what do you do? You just... You're gonna click where you want your oh. axis to be. So like right there. Oh, cool. And, and then, then if you hold down Option and Shift, and you'll click around. Oh, cool. There we go. There you go. Boom. Right. So we'll do that. And then I usually just direct select those two points, and then I do Command J to join the points. Although it doesn't want to right now. <laughs> you have to They're like, we're not under. touching yet. Yeah. And then, so once I have that going, let's see if it'll do it now. Oh. <laughs> Classic Adobe. No, fails, I know. This is my worst fear. It's gonna not listen to me. <laughs> we were talking about that oh, earlier. Great. Right. Now it really won't listen to me. Okay, I'm gonna do it my old school way. Just so. yeah. We were also talking about how people love to see just workarounds and ways that you use the tool that maybe other people don't use it that way. Mm -hmm. um, somebody was saying, I think the pen tool is really, really difficult. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It can be. Oh, there. That's why. There There's you go. Extra one. And uh, my answer to that might be try out the curvature tool. It's a little bit more intuitive, but it does the exact same thing that the pen tool does, and it's hiding under the pen tool in the menu. Oh, cool. Check it out. Awesome, so you did it. So then, yeah, so now that I have this shape, I wanna make like two um, reflective shapes below it that are the exact same, pretty much. So I like to use the offset tool. That's like my favorite, because mm -hmm. I get so crazy if I see like a logo and it's misaligned or like it's not equally aligned. Yeah. That makes me crazy. Yeah. So I'll always go object and then path, offset path, and then right now I already have it set from what I used on the circular part of the logo, so right. it's 0 0.12, I'll hit OK, and then I'll just cut the ends, get what I want, and then I'm gonna adjust it a little bit because it kind of added this little corner that I don't want. So I'm gonna right. go in here and just, I'm gonna add a point here, and I'm gonna delete that. There you go, and offset is a great way to make like that perfect kind of professional repetition of shape. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might just duplicate the top shape and then like oh, I hate that. try and resize it. and Try to eyeball it? Yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> just, this gives you the, the correct yes. visual answer. <laughs> Actually, I might even just go ahead and cut this. <laughs> and we didn't just go with um, the ocean just because like he liked the ocean and the name meant ocean. We're always looking for themes that we can carry through throughout the whole brand yeah. strategy. So um, like the ocean is a great one. Like you can use it as a metaphor for so many different things. Um, so when we find something like that and the client's also drawn to it, it just makes it way easier to kind of plan messaging, you know, yeah. collateral, and mm -hmm. it creates a theme that you can kind of like, 
I mean, definitely the first thing we always look for is parameters. Like we're trying to give ourselves like healthy boundaries to help ourselves figure out like where to go next. Right. Yeah, I see that even in your sketches, how you have like written down these these visual markers, and then you just combine them to mm -hmm. make the logos, and it has to do with the rest of the messaging. Right. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. Also, I feel yeah. like there's two different kinds of logos. I feel like there's almost like a pictorial like. I don't know, it's almost like a little comic frame mm -hmm. where you're kind of giving them a picture of what, you know, a story you're trying to tell. And then there's just more inferred, like, hieroglyphic, mm -hmm. where it's just, like, symbolic, but it doesn't really mean much. But there's probably a really larger, um, like, uh, treatment that goes along with that, right. like, abstract element. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, there's also just the straight up word mark, um, you know set it in a sans serif and kern it <laughs> and I'll just day. call it a day. <laughs> We've work. never done that. We, no. we like always feel like we're yeah. phoning it in if we're only giving them a word mark. <laughs> we're definitely more is more type people. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Maximalism. <laughs> Maximalism. Yes, I love that too. Uh, so good. So this is kind of where it's at right now. I've got a little hidden V in there. And then I was thinking, because he kind of said he, he has that one like outlier inspiration, the cat, yeah, which is kind of more like it just feels a little bit more crafty. That's mm -hmm. probably not the right word, but I'm gonna say crafty. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is add like a little rough in texture on these Heck lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people always ask me how to do this. So I'm gonna show you my cheat, but I'm sure there's a million ways. Okay. So I'm gonna select my little thing that I've got going here, my thing that I want to add a rough in texture to. I'm going to go to Effect, Distort and Transform. Ruffin, and then I always have to futz around with it to kind of get it to where I want it to be. But I'm going to start with 0.5 percent mm -hmm. and like 40, and I'm going to cool. go to smooth, and that's what we got so far. And then if I want to kind of play around with it, then I just go to appearance and just click on here and kind of futz around a bit more. Perfect. And if you click the preview, you can kind of see yeah. it doing it in real time. I always have to do that. I'm very intuitive. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. It's like. See if that's better. Yeah, that's kind of more what I want. Nice. And it just kind of adds a little bit of a, it kind of looks like a stamp now, mm -hmm. um, which I kind of like. Um, and then I think I'm going to add a cap onto these so that it lines up nicely. And then we've got something kind of nice going there. Heck yeah, I like yeah. that. Um, the, one of the ideas that I really loved was this one, this mm -hmm. idea of like the sets coming in, kind of like you see in Hawaii, yeah. like Waimea Bay or something. Is that mm -hmm. right? I don't know. <laughs> Hawaiians, tell <laughs> me if that's been. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to make this one next. Cool. It um, also even almost looks like audio waves, like yeah, wavelengths. Yeah, kind of, right. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool because they're doing the audio visual thing. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. So I'm going to go reflect. I'm gonna get that rough end texture off because I don't need that on here. So I'm gonna dump that over here. Right. And then I'm going to Pathfinder these together. My favorite is the Pathfinder tool. I use it all the time. Yes. It's the best. So satisfying. It's the best. So have you ever done the Shape Builder tool? I don't know, have I? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> so it's literally the Pathfinder, but you can be much more intricate with it. Like I want to, uh, join these two areas, but delete this area, and you do it all by kind of drawing within it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've never used that. It's much more drawing based and less like, click a button, it's done. Yeah. Huh. It's pretty cool. Okay. That sounds cool. I'm gonna have to try that. I'm not gonna do it now because I don't want to look like an idiot. So <laughs> Totally fair. I have an ego <laughs> that I have to protect. Yes, you are a professional. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna start here, and then I'm gonna use pen tool. And actually, somebody was saying they had a hard time using the pen tool, yes. right? When I learned, we started working, our first design job was at this like coupon clipper magazine, like the bottom of the bottom, like not glamorous at all. No like, shade. It, yeah, <laughs> just like, it was a great job though because they taught us everything on the job, they yeah. taught us all the programs. And he would have us just practice using the pen tool by tracing other, he would give us something that was already made and mm -hmm. he would say, recreate this with pen tool. Well, actually I think what that came out of is we had so many clients come to us, it'd be like a, a mop cle cleaner or something, and they'd come and be like, hey, I, I need an ad, like here's my logo, and it's like a 70 DVI yeah. JPEG, yeah. but it's only 150 right. pixels by 150 pixels. Mm -hmm. So we didn't realize that we were offering like a free logo redesign <laughs> service with these ads that came right. free with the advert right. that was crazy. You're like, and here's so, the vector file. Yeah, so we were constantly <laughs> redesigning or just making people logos because they didn't have one. We just yeah. thought, oh, this ad would look better if we made them a free logo. Terrible business Model. <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah, you should never just give it. But anyways, um, it did teach us a ton. Yeah, that's literally the story of how I learned how to use the pen no tool way. as well. Yeah. I used to make like activity books for Thomas Edison inventions. What? I thought you were going to say Thomas Edison, <laughs> Beyond the Grave. <laughs> like, they would sell it in like museums. Okay. Like, Okay. to homeschool, um, but he had these technical drawings of like the actual specs of his inventions, and they're like, we need this in the book, but we need you to 
make it. Like right. they can't actually use it. It was maybe oh kind of gosh. illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so I traced maybe. a lot of stuff. It's hilarious, but it's great practice. Yeah, because yeah. So I would it's just turned into that. a Dateline episode, just like an expose <laughs> of your previous yes. boss. Where are you now? <laughs> I'm gonna fill. Oh, okay. So yeah. So I'm gonna fill this in black. I think. And then I'm gonna make all this white. Sweet. Kind of like a positive negative. Exactly, light and dark, all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, where's my swatches? Here we go. And then I think I'm gonna take that down to like two. I don't know what it is, but whenever I reverse a line, it always looks so much thicker. Yep. So Me I too. always, I always, I don't even care. I'll just adjust it on the reverse logo. I'll mm -hmm. always take shave off like a point zero. Yeah, sometimes 25. perfect things actually don't look optically correct, yeah. and you have to like actually optically align or mm -hmm. optically like fix something, mm -hmm. even though it's not technically perfect. Yeah, that's um, actually a really interesting thing that maybe a lot of people who are just learning like the basics and the tenets of graphic design might not really know yet. No, they're allowed to do. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, really fudge things until they look great. All right, so we kind of got that set saying, which I really like how that's turning out. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to take that down even more, like maybe 1.5. Nice. Um, do you have any, like, should I be answering anything? Or <laughs> let me know if I need to say things. Yeah, they're kind of like sharing their <laughs> Sob stories as well. Oh, like I love how they learn I love a sob story. Yes. Yeah, like Leon says, I learned the pen tool by working for a manufacturing company that made springs. So I had to cop crop out springs all day. Just oh, like that's hilarious. Round that is awful. Pen tools, which is like the hardest. Oh, thing. that's the curves of the worst. Literally the hardest. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> no wonder you're so good now. Leon. Yeah. No wonder. No wonder you're working for Disney. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> and yeah, if you have any questions, chat. Please feel free to ask. We were chatting earlier about this um, book, how they have a lot of thoughts about getting started and as a freelancer, graphic designer. Um, yeah, ask any questions about right. freelancing. Mm -hmm. If you're in the same boat and yeah. you have questions. We're all about transparency. Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing the chat and win in about seven minutes. And just to remind you all in chat, we'll be giving away a cool swag bag of chutzpah stuff. Ooh, yeah. So cool. So the book, Freelance and Business and Stuff. <laughs> this so awesome, perfect. tasty letterpress poster. Oh, I love letterpress. It would look so nice framed on like a gallery wall. Shout out to Czar Press who printed those in Ooh. Orange County. They're the best. Nice, local. Yeah, yeah to local. you. Very cool. There's this awesome photo on the back of you too. <laughs> Very powerful. Yeah. And then also an odds and sods pen that says shine on. Actually, I'll show you full screen because it deserves it. Oh, yeah. Super tiny. And if you want to check out more products, GoPro. Oh, I can use the GoPro. Perfect. GoPro. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> never oh. mind. <laughs> this just went to QVC yes. status right I love now. It. We're, We're like, like three <laughs> installments of twenty four ninety five can get you this. Hey, your nails are beautiful too. You aren't oh. even warned. <laughs> <laughs> All those carrots I eat. I guess I don't know. <laughs> sure, that's okay. is that what does that? Yeah. <laughs> We actually had a neighbor when we were growing up who drank so much carrot juice that her skin turned orange. Turned orange. That happened in the Brady Bunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's real life. Was it <laughs> her? No, but. <laughs> oh, man. That's, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Have you ever had something like that happen to you? Um, gosh, not that <laughs> bad. No. Uh, or like just eating so much fruit that you like. That I could never be accused of eating. I was gonna say if anything, fruits or vegetables. Eating too many what? French fries. Is that a Amy problem? has like three Coca Colas a day. I don't I've know how you're back. still alive. Well, okay. I've cut back because. What are your legal stimulants? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, chat room. Tell us, chat. We want to hear sure. from you. It went from Dateline to Dr. Phil. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's so funny. Man, if I drink one Coke, I. Are you amped? I'm like dead. Dead? Why? Like I'm too amped that I die. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> My heart explodes. But oh, it's really just the cool. sugar in it. Just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, we were we did our formative years in Kentucky and it's like Coca-Cola with Eggo waffles for breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I think I'm gonna survive if there's ever an apocalypse. I think on like it'll be me and the cockroaches. Yeah. Just like you just filter it like water. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's amazing. Actually, more affected by sugar than me is Gus Adobe Live. Shout to Gus. Yeah. If <laughs> he drinks like a drink, <laughs> one gulp of soda or pop, wherever pop. you're from. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Shout out to the Midwesterners. Yes, me. <laughs> um, he's gone. 
He says, goodbye, I'm walking to the moon. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, wow, you, you all must be such healthy individuals then. It sounds so. like you're... We drink a lot of water. Good for you. Because <laughs> we have to or else we die. Yes, there's that. Hydrate before you dehydrate, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, Colleen says, how many vectors do you make of your sketch per project? Do you pick your favorites of these later? Yeah, I totally do. So I'll make, like... I'm probably going to make a bunch of different variations of this one that I'm making right now. So I've got this kind of like V in a little shape with some sets. And then I'm probably going to try a version where I've got like cool. a little outline. So I like to try a lot of different variations. Like I'm going to do an offset path for a little frame. Because mm -hmm. you know the idea of a frame, framing the picture. Heck yeah. Videography, yeah. that kind of thing. This really looks like a stamp. Like something someone right. would use to sign their totally. name or something. Nice. So I'm going to try... This, so I'll try like a bunch of different variations of this one, and then I'll usually just put them side by side, and then I'll say, okay, which one do I like the best? So I'll take that one out, I'll do that one, and then I'll probably make a few more where I maybe like add even a bit more detail, and then I just kind of let them sit. And the best thing you can do when you're trying to figure out like which variation you like mm -hmm. is sleep on it. Wake up the next day, totally. the thing that you thought was your favorite, you'll absolutely hate, <laughs> and the thing that you thought was the worst ever ends up being like the best. Yeah. So. Yeah, always give yourself the time to just kind of sleep on it. Nice. And what do you do in regards to sharing your work, like with each other or other coworkers? Oh, that's so important. Like mm -hmm. we have, um, we have kind of like a tech star going with a couple of close friends. Shout out to Joel Buchelman, Josh Ariza, um, who else? Danielle Evans. We have a mastermind group. Wait, Marmalade um, Blue. Marmalade Blue. She's from Columbus, Ohio. Yes, she yeah. is. Columbus is a powerhouse that's of creators. That's where I'm from. Yeah. Is that where you're from? Yeah. They are amazing. <laughs> what is it? The CSA? Are you two No way. You guys came here together. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two Let's Midwesterners in the big. That's City. More interesting than Turn it into doing. The Bachelor. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's interesting. <laughs> also, the easiest way to scan something on the fly, just text it to yourself. I do that all the time. And then you have your messages pulled up on your laptop. Mm. I'm my best text buddy. Yeah. Wait, Ben says Columbus, Ohio for the win. What's up? Ben, ben? Stafford, dude. Hi, Ben Stafford. You're the man. Zach Wilkinson. Hi. Hello. Wait. Hello, everyone. Wait. So excited. Oh, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's going it's to quick. Satellite says Columbus, Ohio for the win. And actually, Orange County is kind of a creative hub, too. We, mm -hmm. we used to have, like, Mark Hemian, Josh Hemsley, David mm -hmm. Keegan, Josh Ariza, like, all these powerhouses just, like, chilling in Orange County. Who thought? Too powerful. I mean, it's... I like the secondary markets. It's so much easier to stand out. And yeah. then you get invited to San Francisco to do Adobe Live. So, I mean, best of both worlds. <laughs> secondary market? Oh, yeah. Orange County. Yeah. It's like, we could be in L.A. fighting with everybody else who's awesome. Mm -hmm. Or we could just stay in Orange County, shine in Orange County. Yes. <laughs> Reap the benefits. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing about the internet. The internet, man, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. <laughs> I, I know, all my best friends are from the internet. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Instagram. And Dribble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dribble. So I met Zach, um, Ben, all these people. Wait, that's uh, so Leon, cool. Leon, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely scary to share your work with friends, but oh, like- Oh, it's so important. And there'll be people, like if you go to conferences and meet people that you really get along with and hit it off with, just be like, hey, like let me get your number. Let's text each other and just text them. Or your wait, work. first tweet them. That's how I test it. Like uh -huh. Paul Hutchinson is an amazing designer, mm -hmm. yeah. and I just DM'd well, him a few things. Well, it's different when you're yeah heroes versus peers. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, here, send me the files. Here's my number, and I was like, perfect. Okay. Yeah, so, you're in. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you kind of have to test the waters a bit because some people are busy and they just right. ain't got time. And some people just yeah don't really like that kind of thing. And yeah. then some people love it. Mm -hmm. So once you find your crew, it's just so valuable. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Totally depends. Ooh, this is a great question. One more question, and then we'll probably do our chat and win. Uh, Hannah says, hi, guys. Hannah from Yellow Co. here. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Yeah. So cool. How many different concepts do you usually show the client? Okay, so we do a million concepts internally, mm -hmm. but we only send the three best concepts to the three. client. Yeah. Because the more you send, the more they feel like they have the right to question it. There's too many options. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you say these are the three best, like this is what works, we tested everything. Because we show them how the logo works, not only in this icon, but we show them scale down to a favicon and horizontal and stacked. Mm -hmm. So we'll show them that from round one, just to show like, we thought out what works, this is what works. Yeah. Nothing else worked. You don't even get to see, we don't even show them the sketches. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a can of worms. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. then they're and like, also, what about sometimes this thing? you'll sketch something and you love it, and then you actually try and execute it, and it just doesn't it work just doesn't or work. look right. good. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes something that you doodle that looks like actual absolute junk on the paper mm -hmm. looks really great once you actually yeah. execute it. Totally. So you just never know with those things. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah. 
So, so yeah, we usually only show three. And oh. now we're even condensing it down to two for certain people. If mm -hmm. like, because sometimes people say, "Oh, I can't afford that price." Well, instead of just being like, "Okay, fine, we'll take it down for you," which just immediately like undervalues your service. what yeah. you just quoted them. It's like, okay, well, I can give you a revised scope for a revised price. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll take it down 20%, but you're only going to get three concepts yeah. or two concepts instead of three. Yeah. So, um, which a is code. a great rule. Never negotiate with yourself. Don't just give them a discount mm -hmm. just because they can't afford it. Yeah. You have to like, you know, Jenny used to be work. bad. She would send a quote and she'd be like, unless that's too much. Is that too much? <laughs> oh, and yeah. It's like, I would like apologize as I'm writing the email. I'm like, here you go, but you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you need it to be cheaper, we can do that. <laughs> Times are tough. I'll take the hit. <laughs> you know, in this economy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, speaking of free stuff, let's do our chat and win. Yes. Yay. Cool. So if you are not logged in yet on Behance or if you're watching on YouTube, come over to Behance. Be.net slash live is the short, sweet URL to get you here. Log in or make an Adobe ID really quick to log in. And we're going to play a video and then you will have one minute. But let's ask them a question that they can answer. Oh, yeah. Let's like favorite blank to blank. Oh, we have to ask them a question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. We ask? oh, my gosh. Oh, I watch TV while I'm doing design, actually, but I only watch things like X Files, things that have like a million episodes okay. so you can listen to it. So, right. like, what's your favorite? With a really junk long TV? story arc. Yeah, really yes. long story yeah. arc. Yes, favorite? No, like most, um, most like embarrassing guilty TV pleasure shows. TV. Guilty pleasure TV. Please. And it has to be embarrassing. You can't say, oh, it's oh, coming out, I think. Oh, it is? Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll have one minute. We'll play our video. Star Trek. And we'll see the Okay, answers. the office is not embarrassing. That's <laughs> Jacob, you, you disqualify. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Jacob. Okay, we're going to play our video now. back and we're embarrassed for you. Let's <laughs> oh see. Law and order. Sherlock is so good. Law and order. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun. The crown, not embarrassing. None of these are really embarrassing. Teen Mom. Okay. Legends of Tomorrow is embarrassing. <laughs> okay, do you want to But I watch ours? Supernatural. Supernatural, 100%. And Buffy, Buffy is also, also great. Buffy. Dang, this is rapid stream. <laughs> yeah. Jack Horseman. Riverdale. Oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. Oh, good Mark. on you. Good on you. I love it too. Mash Bridges. <laughs> Golden Girls. Yes. Golden Girls. Glow is amazing. Amazing. These are some awesome. You guys have great taste. Great taste. <laughs> Gumball, yes. Yeah. So our name will be articulating. Yes, we have a name of a winner. Would you like to read it? Yeah, where do I? <gasps> Crystal Duke! Oh my gosh! Yay, Congrats. 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 I so love you... these graphics. Did you yeah. like these? Me, personally, yes. no. <laughs> well, no, we have an awesome studio that does a lot of our assets for Ooh, us. Ooh, lovely. Thanks, y'all. Um, so, Crystal, you got some stuff. You got this amazing Shine On enamel pin, the beautiful letterpress that I want to know how you're going to show this off. Oh, yeah. Crystal, let us know. Tag us, girlfriend. What you're going to do. And then you also win the Freelance and Business and Stuff by Amy Hood and Jennifer Hood of Hutzpah. We hope you make all the money. Yeah, and if you do, you have to give them um, <laughs> Just a 5% cut off just, the top. Just five. Just five oh. in perpetuity. Yes. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. Or your firstborn. Just whichever. Mm, yeah. yeah, whichever comes. That doesn't make <laughs> First sense. First or never? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so Crystal, Adobe Live will be in contact with you on your Behance messages, so keep an eye out for that. And if you didn't win, don't be too sad. We have more streams until 2.30 today, I believe. So you have a couple more chances to win. And these ladies will be back tomorrow and the next day with more swag. More swag. 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 Oh, yeah. The mics. Get the mics. Yes. Um, and now it's an ASMR show. <laughs> <laughs> so I usually like to, once I kind of have some concepts kind of together, Right. Then I'll start to try and test out, like, does this scale down to a favicon? Mm. Or, like, what would I do? Which is what, for people who don't okay, know? Okay, so a favicon is that, it's like the tiniest iteration of your logo. It's the little, tiny, little 16 by 16 pixel, or 32 if you're using Retina Display, which we all are, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> icon that goes in the web address bar. Yes. And so I always try to think, like, okay, will it be a monogram? That's usually the easiest go-to, is, like, a monogram, VF. Is this um, Exactly that little thing, which you can't read that one. I poor execution on my part. But you know. But she get it. <laughs> um, so I usually try to think, okay, will this? Is there a variation I can make? And usually it's a simplified variation. So like, there's actually this website. I wish I had. I'll I'll get the link tomorrow. But it's responsive logos, and they show oh, cool. like the big Coca-Cola script logo down to the the serif Coke logo mm -hmm. down to the bottle. You know, all the way down, and it's kind of neat to see. Right. Oh, they thought of every iteration, mm -hmm. every size. So I don't like to pitch something to someone and then only to find out that their favorite does not work. So I always try to figure out, okay, what's what's the favicon? What's all that kind of thing? Oh, I have responsive logos. Oh, here we go. I want to see. Oh. 
I love okay. this site. So it's responsivelogos.co.uk. But um, as you go down, it kind of just shows how it gets oh, I see. smaller, you know? Okay, cool. And like the simpler iterations and then what it looks like larger. And some of them don't change much, but it's just kind of interesting to see yeah, how things yeah. kind of simplify out. Very cool. So yeah. I saw the MTV logo. I met the woman who designed it this weekend. Wait, yeah, oh my gosh, we met her Sharon at a conference. Nope, oh, no. different person. So sorry. <laughs> we, we were misinformed. Yes. The, the original logo versus maybe the new one? Oh, oh we met actually Gail. Okay, I'm thinking Rolling Stone. Gail. Oh, okay. Oh, what's her name? <laughs> but she's like a legend. She nice. did a bunch of stuff for Rolling Stone. And how was it? She was amazing. <laughs> she was telling us stories about Steven Spielberg. It was oh great. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. <laughs> Spielberg. 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 <laughs> Spiel. You know. <laughs> that mo the documentary of his on HBO is so good. Mm -hmm. I love oh. hearing how other people create, even if it's not even my, my industry, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's always Speaking a Speaking of if you love TV and you listen to podcasts while you design, it's called the Writer's Panel, and they have, like, cool. writer's rooms and writer's groups from all kinds of shows come on and share their process. Mm -hmm. But the creative process is so, like, universally helpful, even yeah. between different mediums. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. Yeah. So someone just asked how to pick fonts for logos. Oh, this Which age-old question. Hard. I know. It's, <laughs> so hard. it's literally my worst favorite. My least favorite part? <laughs> um, my worst favorite. My worst favorite part is the logo picking. Um, honestly, what I usually end up doing is I just end up sketching and then making my own word mark because oh. I know it in my head what I want, but mm. scrolling through font sites and foundries can be really exhausting and your yeah. eyes want to bleed and <laughs> headaches ensue. Yeah. And so sometimes I find it easier just to make my own, but of course that's a lot of work and that's a lot of time that I'm taking away from like my profitability. Yeah. So um, I put that into my quote, is that they're gonna get a custom word mark, they're paying for that, they know that there's a value there. A huge value. Totally, it's, mm -hmm. it's unique completely, but as far as picking fonts, oh man, it's just trying a million things. And um, usually if they send over inspiration, you can be, you can kind of say like, oh, they like sans serif fonts. Mm -hmm. um, I like to, even if I use a font, like right now this is octagon font, mm -hmm. I'll usually still try to like play with it and add my own kind of flares. Cool. Customizations, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of Frankenstein it a bit so that yeah. it's still a little bit unique. So what I'll usually do is I'll do create outlines and then I'll just kind of start putzing with it. Right, so if you don't know, Create Outlines turns it into not editable font anymore, but just literal shapes that you can yeah. right, play with. Exactly, and that's kind of fun, because then you can, you know, maybe I want to make all these um, fat parts a little bit fatter. Mm-hmm, um, nice. Yeah, just all sorts of different things. So I, I usually just kind of try to make it at least a little bit more different than the standard. Right, but you said sometimes you will totally a lot of times, yourself. yeah. That's wow. I think that's what we're kind of known for a bit these cool. days, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I usually just sketch it out, lock the layer, and then get in there with my pen tool. And um, that's something that I've been doing a lot recently too, just for passive income, is creating fonts, mm -hmm. and it's so fun. Heck yeah! Um, Do you use a specific software? Yeah, so I've been using Glyphs app, which oh. I love and I highly recommend because it's so similar to mm -hmm. how Illustrator works. Yeah. It's very intuitive mm -hmm. if you're coming from there. Nice. And um, they have really great support for them. They answer you like within the same day. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And it's um, on like a computer. It's no, not on so the you phone. download it. It's um, it's a, a piece of software that you download. And they have a mini version, which I started off with, and then I just bought the full version, which allows you to make open type and true type and all that kind of thing. Sweet. And yeah, I highly recommend it. It's the best. I was gonna ask you. Maybe you can point out an um, example of. Custom type? Yes. Well, we did it. So La Floresta is a great example of us Frankensteining a font. Okay, let's so, check it out. Yeah, so what I did was I loved this kind of script font, mm -hmm. but I, I wanted to make it a little bit more unique, and um, I think that the F was a little bit hard to read. So gotcha. I made my own F, mm -hmm. and then I, I kind of did this little swash effect to yes. come over and create the serif Yay. for the A, which is just like a really fun, like, mm -hmm. intentional like step. This was a, a very corporate brand, so I couldn't do much. This was like my chance to be like, we thought this through. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is creative. Nice. No, it's still fun. It's still yeah. fun. I have a few more over here, too. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Like up here, Jax, is that, that was custom, custom by you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time you can start with the path, um, like your pen tool and you create the path. And then if you use the width tool, mm -hmm. you can create these like thicks and thins really easily. Yeah. And then if you then pathfinder it all together and round out your corners, then it creates that kind of like blurred edge that you see yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I mean, we can show that uh, later, yeah, I'll I show guess. You. I was gonna make... Oh, you wanna do it really quick, yeah. Show us the magic. Oh, I was gonna make a little, I wanted to get like something kind of chunky, mm -hmm. kind of slabby, but with like a serif. How'd you do that? Okay, so this <laughs> is a rectangle. I love yes. using the shape tools. This is a rectangle. <laughs> so I use the shape you tool. One. But using the shape tools is your best friend in, totally. in making your own, um, your own 
like font set. Mm -hmm. So I'll do this and then I'll do the shear tool mm -hmm. right here. And I'll just kind of do it however much I feel like will be good. Awesome. And then I'm gonna make a little serif. And it's all about cut and paste once you make a serif. Mm -hmm. So that was the pen tool. So I used the pen tool and now I'm just gonna option drag that, reflect it. I'm still just used to reflect, but one day I'll use that reflect tool that Adobe was so kind to make for us. <laughs> it's all right. Um, the tools are there for you to use. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then I just kind of like figure out, okay, how do I want that to be? And then I'll usually Option drag, reflect for the other side of the V, which we're making right now. Wow. And then you kind of got this nice thing going on. Mm -hmm. And we can customize how close mm -hmm. you want them to be. Yeah. And then that's when I start messing around with widths. So then I'll say, okay, I want this to go in a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's kind of cool. That's nice. I didn't even want that, but now I love it. So Perfect. now I have to have it. <laughs> oh, tapper. Down yeah. there. It's a bit Stranger Things esque. Mm -hmm. It is a bit yeah. Stranger. What's mm -hmm. that, Benquist? Benquist? Something. Something in a different language. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'll use my, to me, O's are the hardest thing because the counter, the, even just like when you think about, like I'm going to use my ruler. I'm going to do a command R for my ruler mm -hmm. and I'm going to drag down a guide so I kind of know where my X and Y height and all that kind of stuff is and my base. So with an O, it's always a little bit bigger than what the other ones are. Cool. And then I'm going to do copy in front, command F, and I'm going to make a little counter circle, which is what the inside of the letter form is called, that little hole. And you just eyeballed that to make these widths similar. Yeah, I eyeball it first and then sometimes even, because I used to be obsessed with like very ADD about everything has to be the same width, mm -hmm. but for the eyeball, it sometimes it doesn't look right, you yeah, know? So exactly. now I just eyeball and then I go back and I kind of adjust. I see. Yeah, so that's kind of my go-to now. So I've got an O. And then I, I love too how the O's now, like people are like flipping the counter. Yeah, let's mm. try it. Yeah. Makes Ooh, it feel kind of yeah. retro. Or even if you angle it. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit more of that. That's kind of cool. Maybe it's too Gives much. it a bit of like sauciness. Yeah, it's a bit saucy. Ooh, I like it. I, I hate it and I love it, but I'm going <laughs> to step away from it <laughs> it's later. Your worst favorite. Also, yeah. yeah, the thing is, it's like you just have to keep going when you, you realize. Like you're going to hate everything you make when the first day you're designing a logo for someone. Mm -hmm. And then you come back the next day and you can actually see it clearly for what's like worth it to keep moving forward with and what to just leave behind. Yeah. Wow. What to throw to the dogs. And Sarah wants to know, do you ever use a tablet to draw? Oh my gosh, I got a Wacom tablet and mm -hmm. it really has changed my life. Cool. <laughs> a lot of it is just because of my wrists. My wrists are going just to, like I'm an old lady in my oh. wrists. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm only 10 years into this career, like I have to, these have to last me. So I got the yeah. Wacom tablet and it's really helped a lot. Cool. And um, just with doing lettering and illustration, it's great. I mean, do you use it when you do illustration? Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's yeah. the best. But I, I don't often use it in Illustrator. Really? Right. So everyone is using a different program. Program. What are you using? I use Photoshop. Really? But I don't do a lot of really. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't set a lot of type. So oh, okay, okay. It's, I do it. a lot but of also, digital so painting. But also, you do digital painting, right? Yeah. I do all, like, yeah. because we learned in Illustrator, I did all illustrations in Illustrator too, yeah. um, vector illustrations. And then I just take it into Photoshop afterwards to add, like, texture oh, yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Which they even have texture brushes for Illustrator, just slows everything way down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. Real sluggish. Real slow. Mm -hmm. But I learned Photoshop first, so I'm like, oh, okay, the other so, way. Yeah. Around. And I'm always just thinking everything has to be vector because I'm from the brand world of like, will it, you know, like, yeah. just like old school thinking a bit. And totally. just like the panic of like, if they change the specs later, yeah, like, and I've said it wrong and created it all at this lower res. Well, no, I, I totally agree. Illustrator is kind of your catch all. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll be good to you. It will. Mm -hmm. And Luke says, oh, she, so she uses a Wacom tablet, but not right now. You're using a mouse right, right now. Right now I'm using a mouse. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of depends on like, just what mood I'm in. I'm like very fickle about my process. It changes like from day to day. Mm -hmm. um, just whatever's working at the time. Right. Because he wants geometric in his logo, to me I'm just gonna kind of stick with the uh, mouse because I feel like I can. It's interesting too, yeah. like, um, and I'm still putting together this like initial discovery deck, but um, the reason why you get people to sign off is because when he sent us those visual examples of what he liked, he said, he, verbally, he said he loved geometric um, in that kind of world, but then he sent us that one cat illustration, mm -hmm. which definitely felt more organic and like, um, I don't know, natural and warbly, as we yeah. like to say. Mm -hmm. So it's like sometimes you have to confirm their verbal got instructions with visual mm. instructions and say, okay, so you do like geometric shapes, but do you also like this kind of more like, you know, fluid kind of drawing style? Right. Um, and just make sure that you're all on the same page and that definitely helps. 
Totally. I love that you have this deck to look back at, like almost this oh, agreement, yeah. like yeah. you said. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it sounds it sounds bad, and it's I don't mean for it to sound bad, but you kind of have to use the con- uh, the client's words against them a bit. Yeah. Like when they try to get off the rails and they're like, oh, let's add this and this and this. You can say, hey, remember when we like first met? You said you wanted your logo to be really simple, so it would mm-hmm. stand out on the shelves and you could see it from really far away. Yeah. That was such a great idea. I think you are right, and I think we need to like make sure we remember that. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, no, you're right. And then they totally forgot. <laughs> right. what even yeah, talk they're right. And it's easy to forget because it especially is. when it's not your field in your world, um, you tend to kind of just look around you and every time you see something cool, you're like, well, why don't we try that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's important to remind them of the initial goals and go back to that and be like, yes, that's cool for that person, but we've all agreed that these are like great um, guidelines for us. Right. Um, and let's stay on track. <laughs> yeah. And no. And <laughs> right. also no. And a great thing to tell people if they're constantly wanting to try new things and they're not really able to stay on track is just say, do you have unlimited time and do you have unlimited money? Mm-hmm. And they'll always say no. <laughs> you say, okay, then we'll have to like, you know, do what we have for now, which is an awesome solution. Mm-hmm. It's just like, maybe we don't have time to, you know, try every possible presentation yeah. out there. Right. And fortunately you have so many great projects that you can show them right. and be like, you can trust us. Right. right. For sure. real. Should trust us. Should, will, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Robert's wondering, do you ever just jump straight on the computer to hash out ideas or do you always sketch on paper? It's so funny. Every time I do that, I'm like, oh, I know what I'm doing. And then I'm, immediate, I'm like frustrated. It's 10 hours later. Mm-hmm. Nothing has worked out. Yeah. And so now I, I really force myself to do the sketching phase because Um, To me, it's just so much more organic, probably because I started out as an illustrator and fine artist. I Mm -hmm. thought I was going to be a painter, like Jacques-Louis David or something. (laughs) Turns out nobody wants to pay for their portrait to be painted. No, not right off the bat. Right. So I switched (laughs) to design. Mm -hmm. But um, but I find it's just a lot helpful. And even the the mood boarding phase, like just so that like you and the client have set like guardrails so that you're not trying every single thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Because we always say like there's multiple right answers to any design problem like Mm -hmm. we never give a client just one logo and say this is your solution you get no rounds of revisions yeah because I mean you know no app was created perfectly the first iteration you know everything needs collaboration yeah and iteration to make it like you know and you want the client to feel like invest in it so that they're not just like being handed a Mm -hmm. child that they've never met you know it's like oh we both like you know we went through this together baby you know (laughs) (laughs) and here's here's our kid baby (laughs) baby That's also funny. Tara says, love you, hoods. <gasps> Hi, Tara. Is Tara. it Tara? Tara, Tara. 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 She's in our mastermind group. Canadian we just friend. started a mastermind group with cool. her. Do it's tell. She started, it. yeah. she started it, and at first I was like, this sounds cheesy. Sounds like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, Tara. I thought it was so lame. <laughs> but then we did it, and I friggin' loved it. It's changed my life because mm-hmm. it's it's um, seven women. We meet every week, or every two weeks, and we just kind of go over like questions we have about business or or like design, and then we give each other just really transparent advice. Cool. And it's what happens in the group stays in the group, so you can really talk numbers, and yeah. it's really nice. Wow, it doesn't sound cheesy at all. It's not cheesy. I thought it was going to be like my old Bible studies, oh, you know, yeah. like when I was in high school where everyone just like complains all the time. Mm-hmm. I was like, no thanks. I left that behind in Kentucky. Thank you. You're in high school. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she um, says, LOL, rude. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> no, but we love it now. I, I eat my words. I, I tell everyone they should be in a mastermind now. It's like, it's been so beneficial. That's so cool. Haley yeah. says, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. I really recommend it. And it's it. also great if if you live in a small town and you don't really have a design community, I mean, gosh, the internet, you know, mm-hmm. like, join, we all are from different places. None of us live in the same spot. And we mm-hmm. just get on um, a peer in. It's like this uh, video conferencing software. And oh, cool. everyone just talks. And we have a Slack channel. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Man. Is it hard to convince people to actually, like, get on a video call with you? Even if you're just, like working it can be like it's hard for us all to make time it's really yeah. easy to be like oh i'm busy today like i can't make it mm-hmm. but you really have to make time for it because it's so beneficial yeah right yeah but i'm i'm very much of like oh, i hate meetings but, but speaking meeting. of video calls for like client purposes we've always found that the first proof that you deliver to someone especially a logo it's so crucial to like look that person in the eye and to set the pace of presenting the logo to them mm. if you send them a pdf and an email they're always just going to skip to the very end of what they want to see. They're not going to look at your context. Mm -hmm. They're not going to read why it serves the solution. So if you don't give them the PDF until you have a video call together where you can share your screen with them and walk them through it and like pace it and set the mood, like act like you're pitching like a movie to like a big group, you know, and like set the the mood, like go through it and then explain to them why it it serves the purpose. Mm -hmm. And then they don't have time to like, um, get in cahoots with themselves about what they don't like yet before you've been able to prove why it's great. Mm -hmm. So we always, if we can't meet them in person, we do video chats for the first proof 
round because that's the most important. And then after that, for rounds of revisions, it's like emails are totally fine. Gotcha. So do you try and meet people in person? Is that like the best case scenario? We work with a lot of people overseas, like Australia oh. and France, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And we never meet, but just having a phone call is everything. Or yes. a video chat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a video chat. Because there's a lot, too, that you just can't convey in tone. Like, everyone's misunderstood the, the message, the text message before. Oh, And yeah. when you can look someone, like, at a video chat and, like, or just even talk to someone over the phone and convey that you care about the project, mm -hmm. it just makes the world of difference. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you're almost setting up, like, insurance for yourself. You already have all yeah. these things. You're like, I know this has gone poorly in the past. Oh, yeah. Let's not do that again. I think it's, yeah, it's basically just, like, gaining their trust, which is the hardest thing of, like, I care about your company like as much as someone can without owning it, you know, mm -hmm. as much as you do, as yeah. much as I can, you know? Yeah. So just helping them trust you so that they're not going to just knee jerk, you know? I hope, yeah, that's great. And Andrew says, hey, hey, Hoods, Creative What's South up? crew tuning in and cheering you on. Nice. Uh, Thank he you. was the um, MC. Uh, yeah, MC at Creative South oh, this year. So hilarious. hilarious. Which Creative South is an amazing conference. I want to go. Super affordable. Oh, you, you yeah. guys should do an Adobe Live there. I Adobe bet they'd be live? down. Mike Jones, are you listening? Yes. <laughs> Mike Jones. <laughs> Someone call Mike Jones. Andrew, can you get on that, please? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Leon says Creative South in the house. Anyway, it's like one of the best. It was the first conference that asked us to speak, and we were like, speak about <laughs> what? And that's how we started, wrote this book. We wrote 60 pages of notes. Mm. We're like, this is a novel. This is a book. So we'll figure out something else for the speech, and we'll just print this. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so thanks, Mike Jones, for that opportunity. Wow, that's amazing. And when was your first time speaking? That was like five years ago, which is crazy. Oh. I know. <laughs> Leon says Mike's phone just blew up. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it vibrated <laughs> off the desktop. <laughs> uh, Red, uh, Ritesh says Hoods have a beautiful studio. I'm so in love with it. Oh, thank you so much. We actually have a home office. Yeah. If you are a freelancer, um, the, the biggest expense hack you can have is like working from home. Yeah, <laughs> it mm -hmm. can be hard to create separate space. So if that's a problem for you and you just don't have the space for it, like, you know, you can definitely go to uh, shared workspaces or even if you have friends with agencies or, or their own businesses, sometimes they'll just let you hang out and work yeah. there. Yeah. But it can be such a money saver. And to this day, we just prefer to like have the, the like ability to come and go whenever we want. We mm -hmm. All of our employees are remote. Also shout out to Arturo Jimenez, who always holds down the fort. Yes. Oh, and um, cool. he's one of our um, team members. But um, we all work remote. He works at his house, we work at our house. That's and awesome. we just Skype each other or Slack or whatever. Um, I love that. Yeah. But yeah. We realized when we were about to get an office, we we're like, we don't want to keep nine to five hours. It's exactly With why we Yahoo's started working. Walking for in ourselves. off the street asking for business card designs. Yeah. So. No thanks. No thanks. Yeah. Like, this is not how this works. No. We <laughs> ain't got quite. time for you. That's mean to say. But you got to know, you know, like what, what you want to do and be mm -hmm. kind of true to that. We used to say yes to everything and we were completely inundated with work we weren't passionate about, right. you know? And that wasn't making us any money, honestly. Mm -hmm. So just realizing what your strengths are, what's make the most profitable. And um, also, there's nothing wrong with doing work that you're maybe you don't like and you don't show, but it pays well. Yeah, <laughs> and that can that. fund the passion projects totally. you have oh, that yeah. you're excited about, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, and you can kind of just get those done and mm -hmm. let them be what they are. Like, we have probably about 40% of our work is retainer clients that are mm -hmm. projects that are not that fun, but it pays the bills. And then we I have probably. They're not fun, but they're more well, just like the just creative corporate. style has been yeah. set, and we're like, mm -hmm. it's more production at that point, yeah. Yes. And then we have about 30% are new branding projects. So we have like 30% new clients. Mm -hmm. And then the rest we're trying to do in passive income, which has been hard. Actually, I'd say 40% is new clients. But that's a good way to like make sure that you're getting the amount of work in that you want to every month is mm -hmm. like, okay, we need this many logo projects, and we need, um, and we'll have, you know, 40% of our income coming from our cash cow clients, which are our retainer clients. Mm -hmm. And that's a way to like make sure that you're, you're staying on track and not not getting behind on bills and stuff. Right. So but basically you're saying you just need to stay on top of everything. Yeah, you everything. just got to plan it out, man. <laughs> you got to take the time. Yeah. Like, I, um, consider ways that you can productize yourself. Like, if you're constantly, people are constantly emailing you and say, how do you get your textures on your illustrations? Mm -hmm. Then make it a, a texture pack and sell it. You know, you, yeah. it's like, don't just tell them, like, mm -hmm. it would be nice and that's cool, but like, why not just, you know, give them the resource they need, but also feed yourself. Right, I you noticed know? that on your website there was. Yeah, everyone pack. kept asking me for halftone patterns, and so I made my own kind of warbly, kind of retro halftone patterns. Yeah. And I mean, we probably get like three or four downloads of that a day. It's only $2, That's you awesome. know? Yeah. So little things like that, and then I'm making two new fonts right now that'll be on there soon. Ooh. Yeah, so just really trying to figure out ways to make it, make that money while we sleep. Very cool, and I see. Like day, right? You also have your workshops are on here. Yeah, we, we're doing workshops. Too. Yeah, we're doing actually one in San Francisco this weekend. We have a few seats left. If anybody's in SF, we're going to tell you how to set your hourly rate, your budgets, 
Um, we have a bunch of worksheets. Had a flat rate quote. Yeah, had a flat rate quote. Um, yeah, contracts, all that kind of stuff. Yep, it's gonna be really fun. All the good <laughs> stuff. So seriously, if you're in SF, check that out. Yeah. They can find the info on your website. Yeah. Right, in the shop tab. Cool. Yep. Cool. And we have about five minutes left. Oh, sweet until we're going to do portfolio reviews. Oh, cool. Uh, and that should take us pretty close to the end of the stream before we kind of wrap everything up. Awesome. Um, cool. Just a heads up. We've got Chris and Emily in the house. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> hey. <Yeah. laughs> and they'll be up, let's see, from 12.30 to 2.30? <laughs> I was like, how does time yeah. work? <laughs> I live in the studio. Um, but between this and that, we'll be having the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I believe it's day six. Uh, today's challenge is to work with a template in Photoshop. So there's tons of free templates we're going to be playing with. Cool. If you're new to Photoshop, please feel free to come hang out. It's free and you can learn a lot. So yeah, we had Sarah starting out the day, Nick coming up after that. We're on to Hoodspa now, Photoshop Creative Challenge, and then Chris and Emily, and then we'll do the same thing. Cool. Tomorrow and the next day. This is like, look at all of those things. This Very is like a conference I itinerary. Like, yes. <laughs> I don't, you guys run a conference every prime week. time right here. Insane. That's amazing. That's yeah. pretty, go you. Go all of you. Adobe <laughs> Live Conference. Come and get it every Tuesday through Thursday. Exactly. <laughs> Man, we got Peter in the chat. What's up? Oh, hey. oh what's up? Hey, hey Peter. Peter. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. So um, I guess what um, I'll do okay. before we do the giveaway, or what we'll do tonight is we'll send these off. We'll pick our three favorite. If you guys have favorites, let us know, mm. um, you guys and gals. Um, maybe I'll put some y'all. Let's let's get the y'all thing going. I'll put some mm -hmm. letters on it so we can figure out which are our faves. Amazing. Yeah, I love doing this in chat. It's so fun. It goes a little wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to blow up. Mm -hmm. we should have, you guys should have a polling thing. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We could do a straw poll. But we'll just let them blow up the chat. Blow it See up. what's up. <laughs> so we'll say our favorites. You'll pick your favorites. Send it to Amen. Noah. And we'll probably keep working on these to finesse them a little bit more because mm. let's be real, you can't make anything quality. <laughs> anything at all. I mean, you can make it. These are starts, but like, yeah. you know, yeah. we definitely would want to finesse them a little bit more mm -hmm. and um, put them in like a nice proof deck to proof they work on everything. Yeah, definitely. And you've been working on something over there. Oh, yeah. The whole um, thing I can, time. Let's see. Well, I was going to show you this, which is um, it's kind of like a segment from our pitch deck whenever people ask us, hey, do you guys do logos? Mm -hmm. It's like our most common request. So we put together this um, kind of template deck that we send to people, and it's not just a quote, we like walk them through, okay, um, usually we'll start with um, a page that says who we are, and yeah. it'll give a little bit of background about the team, but then we go to the like clients page to show we've worked with some people that they might be impressed by. <laughs> <laughs> and we're always showing work, um, so that was like a logo we did for um, 20th Century Fox for one of their shows. And then we prove that we've done um, not only logos, but like identity packages mm -hmm. so we try and always get jobs that aren't just a logo because you never need just a logo you need like yeah. other it's a system yeah mm -hmm. so we like to show them examples of work we've done where um, they did get like a full scope so that it gives them an idea of how cool. how much we can do for them mm -hmm. um, so we're setting the tone throughout all these pages in this deck and kind of showing them what we're capable of in a variety of ways and then so at the end of after that is where I would show them like our process, you know, and then I would show them like the general timeline of how long it takes to do logo. And then after that, I would give them the quote. Gotcha. So it's like you've really set the tone of like, hey, mm -hmm. we've done this before. We know what we're talking about. Here's a lot of great work to show that we can do it. And then it kind of justifies the, the flat rate quote way more. Yeah. So there's not so much sticker shock, you know? They're yeah, because like, if you just started out with the price, they'd be like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And yeah. so when we, and they ask for a logo, but we never just quote them for a logo. We mm -hmm. say we always do packages because it's in your benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll build in like a few of the key like collateral pieces that we think they would benefit from. Right. So, so it's um, customized for each yeah, person. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Each group. Wow. I've, I imagine. it's always flat rate PS. Oh, cool. Yeah. For logos. For, us, for yeah. logos. For a specific scope. And is that for a reason? I'm sure it is. Yes, because with logo specifically, you're not just getting paid for the hour it, t it takes to create a mark. They need to be paying for the value. Which it's never just an hour. Right. Well, the hours. Oh, no. The yeah. hours. Um, the days. But, but yeah. they should be paying for the value of the mark itself because this is going to be their mark, hopefully, for decades, mm -hmm. for the whole existence of their business, hopefully. If you mm -hmm. think about like NBC or Chase, you know, these businesses, they've been using their logo that long. Mm -hmm. It has incredible potential for like, you know, um, just value. So mm -hmm. you're charging for that and for all the strategy and planning that you have to consider when you're thinking, how is this going to weather time? How is it going to be applied across all these different scenarios. Right. So, yeah. 
And hopefully they understand that. Right. And if they don't, and they say somebody else said they could do it for a hundred bucks, and you say, cool, and, and that's fine, really. Like, there's, yeah. maybe they don't need, you know, like a really complex thing, um, right. complex system, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's cool that you're like, I get it. Yeah. There's it's room for everybody. More. That's the amazing part. There's so, yeah. like, we refer, any job we can't do, we always refer out. We have a list of people that we refer to. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, um, I think, one of the most beautiful things about this community. And Nick was talking about that before, yeah. how, like, 80% of his business is referrals. Same. I mean, I would say, actually, all of ours is, except for, like, Instagram or, like, social media stuff. Mm -hmm. But every job we've ever gotten has been just, like, a friend remembering us or telling another friend about us, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you do right by your friends and by the people that may seem like small time, it's amazing what they'll go on to do. And that's how we've gotten jobs with people like, you know, Google and ASICs and Disney. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Leon for the job with Disney. Hey, uh, <laughs> amazing. But it's like we all knew each other when we were just at a crappy coupon clipper and he was doing whatever. Leon, what were you doing at that time? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but just keeping in touch with your friends, like relationships are what make the world go around, you know? Heck yeah. And just trusting that. Totally. Yeah. It's going to be okay. And just putting yourself work out there and reminding people like, hey, remember I do this thing? It's amazing mm -hmm. how many people still are like, whoa, you're a designer. It's like, have you been paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> no. no one asks that anymore, but people still don't know that we run odds and sods. They're like, that's yours? Mm -hmm. like, and you ain't following the Instagram. No, not quite. <laughs> that's amazing. And having those kind of cool passive side hustles going is also something we could probably talk about right. further. But for now, our timer has run out for our portfolio reviews. Bye. We have two lucky viewers that um, we're going to look at their work and give some feedback, let them know what's really working and what uh, they could do to make it even more successful. Um, so cool. We're going to go to our space station and we'll be back in a second. Survived. It's 300 years later, <laughs> and you're probably all not around anymore. Just kidding. It's not how space works. Um, <laughs> but Matt Damon's up here. He is, well. and he's making his potatoes real. for us. <laughs> okay, so we have two amazing portfolios. We're gonna look at. Feel free to take the helmet off oh, or okay. keep it on. I prefer it on, actually. <laughs> Might be a nice way that they can tell you two apart. Right. There we go. Okay. Like, yeah, she has the shorter hair. Also, she's wearing a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Can someone out there get a picture of this and tweet it, please? <clears throat> I screen will shot. You. Screen Thank shot. Um, wait, do a screenshot pose. Did it work? Hopefully someone did it. <laughs> did it work? <laughs> did um, we do it? So we're going to be... I'm going to take this off. This is echoing in my head. <laughs> we're going to be looking at Jacob's portfolio first. Dang, Followed Jacob. by Aisha's. Mm, exciting. Okay, so let's look at just the whole layout. This is his Behance, amazing portfolio. Um, let's look at the info he gives us, first and foremost. It says, my unwavering love for all things aesthetic, tireless work ethic, and passion for drinking every last drop of experience life has to offer have prepared me for an endless journey on the road of unique and inspired design. Ooh. Wowza. And then a little bit of work experience, creative director at Snowboard Company, and layout and design editor at a magazine. Cool. Right on. Nice. And a nice website link. Love it. So Always into website. Right. Definitely. Do any of these projects really? Ooh, it looks like the first one with the face with the. That's cool. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, nice. oh fun! Mm -hmm. I love that. Cool. I like things that are kind of unexpected like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, it takes something that, you know, like this is a very popular style that you see a lot right now, but it's doing something different with it. Right. Which you have to do if you're going to do a trend. There's nothing wrong with trends, they're trends for a reason, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but just taking it and making it your own, right. taking your own spin. I think that's great. Right. Um, yeah, it's like whimsical and a bit dark in a good way. Yeah. yeah. It's not like foreboding. Right. It's no. more like this is cool. It's like a happy trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, so my local scissor wizards were in need of some merchandise and I was more than happy to lend my illustration services. Very cool. So these are shirt designs. Oh, cool. What do you think about it. the layout of the actual project? Like the, the titles and the info that is given? Oh, interesting. Well, yeah, let's scroll to the top. Let's see. I think I like it. I think it's like straight to the point. You know, like here's here's um, like the main marks, and then I'm assuming like if you go down, mm -hmm. right, like on white, and then maybe like some t-shirt tags or you know yeah. like hang tag, kind of like smaller. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, matchbook illustration is cool. Yeah, I love it. I kind of think maybe like a mock up with them on the t shirts yeah. I would suggest. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. And I was thinking on the top one. Um, on that arc text, I usually don't use an italic font on arc text. For some oh. reason, to me, it just looks like a little bit like slightly off it's always. Like, yeah, it's like a little <laughs> bit right heavy at, like mm -hmm. every time. So I wonder if that what that would look like. But I still love it as a concept. I really right. like it. So. Yeah, I think it definitely kind of sways towards the hand done, mm -hmm. almost like hand laid out feeling, which right. I don't mind so much. But yeah. I can see how that would make you feel off kilter. Right. For sure. I dig it. Mm -hmm. Cool, yeah, let's get those on some t-shirts. There's free uh, templates on Adobe Stock. What? That's so yeah. cool. So check it out if you're interested in Jacob. And Jacob, are you here? Hello. Hello, Jacob. <laughs> Hello. Good job, Jacob. Yes. OK, let's pick another one. Oh, let's do the cinema. That looks great. Cinema skateboards, yeah. I love that wavy Ooh, text. Fun. Yeah, all this kind of stuff is so popular right now, and I love it. It's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Um, so they approached me about assisting in their branding and launch by creating logo concepts and sticker sheets. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, fun. Yeah. I can totally see putting And for a snowboard on. company, like that yeah. vibe totally suits. It does. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love those. Those oh are gosh. hilarious. Oh, no. Those characters are amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Um, oh, interesting, showing the revision round. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, to me, I'm unsure the difference. Like, yeah, the variation. Between... Maybe showing like A, B, C, D to help us show like, are you going left to right? Or mm -hmm. like, are there, is it vertical columns or are the rows? Because I don't really see the difference in those on the right. left. Right, exactly. Yeah. It almost seems like it's going like these two and then these two, these right. two, yeah. these two. I'm sure there is one. I, I just if really anything, can't see If anything, if they're that similar, I would show only the like revisions on the final one you chose rather mm -hmm. than like all of the ones that were like slightly similar. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe if there are ones that are like very different, like on the right side, you could show a few of the unchosen and options that you really yeah. like, as long as they're different enough. Yeah. Right. Um, but I would, yeah. But I do like that seeing that now. sometimes because sometimes the client picks the end option that maybe you weren't the most thrilled with. So showing some of the 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 mockups that you did like to get to that point is to me that's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some font exploration. Oh, cool. And like where these so, used. Yeah. So I guess I would be confused on that too. Is that like a style sheet or is that just fonts that were used in the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, to me, I think that's unnecessary because it's a sticker um, portfolio post. That's true. Um, so maybe instead just showing the stickers mocked up on like a board, yeah. like take some pictures of the stickers in action. To me, mm -hmm. I love seeing things actually in use on yeah. a portfolio. Because yeah. then you know, oh wow, they actually made this. This wasn't just something that they did and it didn't actually it's come It's weird the psychological power of mock-ups. Yeah. Like every time we present proofs to clients, like if we don't take the time to do the mock-ups to just show them potential applications, like mm -hmm. they're like kind of wowed, but there's something about yeah. seeing any logo on a t-shirt or a beanie or mm -hmm. um, etched window and it just like blows people's minds because yeah. they can start envisioning it in real places. Right. And logos are intangible until you put them on something. A business card yeah. or, yeah. Yeah, so definitely recommend that. Right. Yeah. I also feel like sometimes it, conveys this idea to the client that's like, we already made this, like it exists right. now, so yeah. do something with it. Totally, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm thinking now, I see a bunch of different typefaces used in here, mm -hmm. so maybe that's where all of these. It. So it's kind of like his credits came and in. credits. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, his like illustration skills are I love really it. great. It's so fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really fits, especially because skaters are kind of like, I just love it. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. A little irreverent. <laughs> yeah, irreverent. Yeah. I love that. Cool. A little irreverent. Mm -hmm. And this, even if this isn't meant to be kind of like a, um, a top image or like a header image, mm -hmm. it looks like one. Yeah, so that's great. Really nice job, Jacob. All right, let's look at one mo project. Oh, what do you want to do, Jen? I picked I can't two. see that closely. Oh, Jen has bad eyesight. <laughs> let's it's do my bottom left. This one? Yeah, X Mag. All right. This is from 2017. Hmm. Oh, fun. Oh. So not too old. I love that like logo mark for X Mag. Mm -hmm. I really, do really you do love that? it. Do you? Well, let's see. That's the other thing about portfolio posts that I'm a oh, big. Yeah. We do a lot of portfolio reviews at colleges, nice. and it's always so frustrating when they don't tell you what they did because mm. inevitably I will always compliment the thing that they didn't do, <laughs> that somebody else did. And so definitely when you do a portfolio post, um, make sure to say like if there was a custom word mark made or if you made the logo, as well as doing the poster, really outlining the scope of mm -hmm. the project. And then giving credits to anyone who helps exactly. um, with other yes. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but I mean, it's it's cool looking. Yeah, that's something you can do on Behance is you can actually link other people's oh, portfolios. Oh, cool. that's right. great. So I like, did this with these people. Uh, he says, I didn't do the X Mag logo. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good logo. Yeah, I love the logo, but mm -hmm. it's still a really cool poster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really simple. Nice. I mean, it drew me in. I wanted to click on it, so mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. So yeah. great job, Jacob. Thanks for sharing your portfolio. Love it, Jacob. Really Can't good. Wait to see what you make more of. I'm going to send you a follow. <laughs> All right, let's go over to Ayesha, graphic designer from Los Angeles, California. Oh, cool. So she says, 
graphic designer studying new techniques and exploring different fields. I'm learning constantly and continue to share knowledge with my peers. I'm currently working part-time as a graphic designer assistant while exploring design styles and design trends. Cool. Nice. Ooh, let's start with the first one. All right. And jammed. Ooh, Ooh. see, like, immediately, that mock-up, wow. yeah. I'm mm -hmm. impressed. I'm like, she I, printed I a magazine. <laughs> is that a mock-up? It looks so It good. looks real. It, it, it looks, looks real. real. It looks like a photo. I know. Either way, if you did a mock like, even if it was a mock-up, I'd be impressed. There's just something about seeing something yeah. tangible. So mm -hmm. I like that as a hero image. Look at all this. Nice. And I love seeing the process. To me, and I think to a lot of people who are hiring, they don't want to know that you just have skills. They want to know that you have design thinking. Right. They want to mm -hmm. know that you're not just going to need to be told every little thing to do. They want to know that you're going to be able to, you right. know. Like what your parameters were, why you made those decisions. Exactly. And it looks like she just explained that, which is great. Yeah. yeah. So she shows her first attempt, her ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, those are cool. Wow. I like seeing how, like the different variations of how it could look in different colors mm -hmm. and like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe how it works as a system. That's always cool. Nice. Yeah and showing the final nice. design and actual internal cool. inside pictures. I really feel like everyone should have to work in a magazine once in their life. <laughs> like learning text hierarchy is the best thing that ever happened to me in my whole career. Just like yeah. where the eye goes first, like how to lead someone through yeah. an, an article. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On that text, what are you thinking about like the first line indent and the right ragged on the text? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I wouldn't I don't think I would do that. I oh. think I would choose like especially if the right ragged is so ragged that mm -hmm. I would choose like a left justify like gotcha. um instead of doing that first line indent cuz it kind of creates a little bit too much of this. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's cool. my only thing there. And also it's fun um when we did magazines, I'm all about like little pull outs and call to actions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a like a uh, like a Twitter age that we live in, like people want quick info. So like having little spots that the eye can go to quickly to have like a quote or like um, some sort of tidbit of information to right. draw them into the article, mm -hmm. I love to see those. Especially because like layover, that doesn't really explain what the article's about. Right. There's no image, so specifically in text only articles, you'd yeah. want something where if someone was like, do I want to read all this? Yeah. Right. They could see a quick little pull out that was something funny that would be like, oh dang, that's cool. Yes. Or interesting. That's interesting, I need to read this article. Yeah. And it adds a bit of visual interest too. You know, you can, yeah. yeah. Do a text wrap. What's her um, like folio solution for like page numbers and and um, okay, it's top right, left right, and then what's in the in the margins there? It says in, in jammed, jammed. Oh, cool. in 2017. Cool. So I think this was like a poetry cool. uh, oh, anthology. Neat. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, cool. Or some sort of story that kind of makes sense then that you wouldn't really have a pull quote, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like this little squiggle. That yeah, that's fun. Just those little elements that add like mm -hmm. personality. That's yeah. great. Oh, cool. cool, and it's a part of the logo, pros. It's nice. cool. I feel like this poetry symbol doesn't really match. Yeah, is it? Indicators oh, yeah, I have to agree. I would say I would do it the same um, width and stroke of mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm trying pros. to find it like in context somewhere. Right. I don't oh, there it is right there. there. Okay. Yeah, if you just made it like the no thicks and thins. Exactly, just edge. mono width mm -hmm. with the same kind of rounded edge. Right. Yeah, I agree. Very nice. So let's look at one mo. Should we do? Oh, Ooh. actually, first, this is a great example of multiple owners. Oh, for cool. The project. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I love that. That's nice. so cool. Okay, one more. Let's look at the theater poster series. I love movie posters. Yay. Okay, fine. Wow, look at this texture in the Ooh, I love a GIF. Yeah. Oh, I love a GIF. GIFs are powerful. GIFs are powerful. Even simple ones like that where you can tell she didn't use motion design software. Mm -hmm. She probably just had three. Photoshop. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, three artboards that she then put into a GIF, but it, it, it works. It, like, there's something about it that just is like immediately impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish it kept looping though. That's true. I always do a forever GIF, mm -hmm. I have to say. I'm, I'm really into making GIFs now. I've been doing them for the NBA. Mm. Like, if something funny happens in a game, like, like I make a little GIF. Them? No. Oh. It, but this is my thing. I You make the work you want to get. So right. I figure if I make enough, mm -hmm. I can either get a gig with the Lakers or the NBA. So, cool. That's our goal. That's our goal. It. With LeBron himself. So, Unicorn <laughs> Theater. Okay. So, we've got. Poster series for Unicorn Theater upcoming plays. Oh, fun. Okay. Nice. So, dark color scheme, mysterious intention, pop of red, textured background are what brings the posters to life. Cool. I do really like the textured background. That's neat. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's one big old project. Oh, yeah. So, maybe breaking it up. Yeah, so that you can see them mm -hmm. in your screen at one point. Yeah. yeah. I love the bo the simplicity with the bottom info. Right. Yeah. Like the simple, bold image with the, you know, the bottom kind of title credits. I love that kind of a vibe. Nice. What do you think about texture mixed with such kind of a slabby font? Interesting. Yeah, I th I think I kind of like it. I, I like it, it too. Yeah, yeah, I like the I like the variation. Are those blood spatters? They look like petals. Um, 
They do kind of look like rose petals, don't they? Yeah. I guess that's for the wedding part, like oh, walking down the yeah. aisle. You but know, I like the flower girl. Is probably... it a brush, though? Is it the... Uh, Are they default brushes? <laughs> I know. See, and this is the other thing. If you send a portfolio to somebody and it's too difficult for them to view, right. they probably won't take the time, even if your work's really good. So making sure to like separate those images okay. out. It looks like a couple different brushes. Yeah, oh, it is. It's a flower. Yeah, right. I think it is a flower for sure. Mm -hmm. cool. But it's symbolic of yeah. blood, mm -hmm. yeah. probably. But it's stark. It's it's nice. I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. But even one tone of lightness and darkness is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Cyclops. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Like that. Yeah. Although I will say it seems way more restive than the, the genre probably is. To me, it feels very yoga. For the Cyclops zen, one? Yeah. But isn't, do you think Cyclops is a scary movie? I feel like it is. That, <laughs> that one, I feel like could maybe be like more of an open eye. Yeah. But I love the blood wedding one. Yeah. I think that yeah. one has that the tension. That definitely shows the tension. For. The Cyclops one's missing a little bit of tension, but it, yeah. it still fits the uh, theme nicely. So. Right. And maybe it feels more restive, as you said, because it feels more like almost like a tribal symbol. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas. Maybe if it were keep brush or something. Yeah, like this is very clean. Right. I guess, it, yeah, it's missing that white stark element mm -hmm. yeah. that ties in with the paintbrush to yeah. kind of keep the theme going. Yeah. Right. Cool. And then we have a Ooh, I like this one. Yeah. I do like that oh, one. that one's really well so done. I like that one a lot. Yeah. It's in your photograph. I know, I'm having. It's like a really textured photo. Oh, it photo, looks like, I yeah, they, I think you're right. Maybe they lab trace something and. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I it's like cool. that. It's really nice. Really yeah, ghostly. I do really like that one. Awesome. The texture on that one's really nice. Mm hmm. Like there's enough reality, but it's still like um, mm -hmm. very. Uh, graphic. I almost feel like the knife could use a little bit of that texture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the serrated edge where it actually looks like a bit real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyways. context photos. Perfect. Oh. That's great. Mm -hmm. it, although, I don't know if that context is right. Yeah. Because um, it's like, oh, are they at a cabin? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but context photos are usually right. great. So mm -hmm. maybe. Maybe finding a different mock-up photo. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Mark says Adobe is not getting that helmet back. She's, <laughs> She's taking it away. No, no, no. And this is super nitpicky, but it just seems like this, these reds wouldn't exist in within that. this like exactly filter. The, the color yeah. is different. It's like it's kind of clear that it's been photoshopped mm -hmm. in. But you can, so I think it was probably a stock photo that wasn't a mock-up that yeah. she then placed it in. Right, um, right. And you can change that or fix that easily just with like a color lookup mm -hmm. layer on top of everything. It should help a yeah. little. Yeah. Cool. Shown in a more stark environment. Cool. Little that's phone cool. action. Nice. Yeah. And even laying out all of this too. Right. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Just showing to show how you're considering can, those things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How can you're live across for those multiple solutions. scenarios? Mm -hmm. 100%. Cool. Love that. And that's it. So cool. this is really fleshed out. Nice yeah. job, Aisha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job, Aisha. I like that. Mm -hmm. Overall, I really like it. Yeah. Very cool. So I think that's all we're going to have time for for this portfolio. Thanks, everyone, for sending these in. Yeah, it takes you. a lot of courage. It does. Oh, it does. Yeah. Especially when you have amazing professional designers looking at your work. Ooh. <laughs> it's a little nerve wracking. So you are brave. Uh, congrats. And if you want to get your portfolio reviewed uh, in other opportunities, we'll have more streams where everyone's doing portfolio reviews all week. So check out that if you were not selected. And let's hop back to your screens. Okay. We have about like seven or eight minutes left okay. to kind of show what you want to show and wrap things up for tomorrow. Awesome. Well, maybe I'll show. I have a quick question for the audience. Ooh. Do should I even keep going with any of these, or are because we, me and Amy, both agreed we liked hers way better from the get go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but these were some initial ones. We like like the geometric shapes, and we were trying to play with that because Voda are all such. The, each of those letter forms are so geometric. You yeah, know? yeah. The the letters are perfectly like reflective yeah. in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. That um, top left is so interesting. That one I love. Yeah. That's a new one. That, yeah. Like yeah. That. So obviously mm -hmm. with that one, I feel like I, I would definitely take it further and figure out like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it needs something else. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just like it could be easily mistaken for like most modern art museum logos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. Which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> and then it seems like. The one that you're hovering over right now is really inspired by that specific inspiration he sent over, mm -hmm. where it was like circles and... Yes. This one? Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. one definitely. Playing with like the reflections on the water, mm -hmm. sun setting. Reflections on the water, so and at cool. first I was like, oh, the, the sun reflecting turns into the D. Mm -hmm. But I think if you didn't know it was a Voda, you might not be able to read it as Voda. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm not really 100%. I don't like that font really with it. I just kind of kept it. I love there. top left. I think there's something that can be done Yeah, there. maybe something there. 
but is this one too weird? Like oftentimes um, I like the idea of odd shapes, but there's a reason why most logos aren't odd shapes. Like this <laughs> yeah. goes really far down. Yeah. And that I think could that be, one like, could work. Problematic. And maybe just thicken up the lines a teensy bit so that right. when you scale it, it's not so uh, varied. Yeah. Because I really like that one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Sarah says I like the top left. Debbie says, I also love the vertical iteration. Yeah. Yeah, I love that vertical iteration. Which, again, like, my other thing is, like, is it okay that they might not know immediately what it says? Yeah. And then you would read the messaging on the site, you know? like I think you would definitely have to have a word mark solution that may be a little bit clearer. Yeah, but maybe yeah. this was. I yeah. do like the idea of these kinds of shapes because you could easily do something like And these. you could think of the animation, mm -hmm. like, that could be on the website. Like, the logo kind of yes. rotates and turns mm -hmm. into real letter forms. Like, yeah. maybe, like, a Gotham style. That's true. So cool. Little yeah. motion graphics. And I, I definitely think you're right with that top one could be turned into like a pattern that totally. you can apply to other yeah. things. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunity for that one. I say, I like that one. I say we keep going. With okay. It. I'm going to keep going. So we'll come back tomorrow with hopefully stuff that looks yeah, so better. Yes, we're going to keep working on it, flesh Ooh. out some icon ideas, maybe do some monograms. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably try and figure out how to make my favorite of these ones into, you know, Favicon's horizontal stacked, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We'll set up our proof sheets and then we'll send them off to Noah and get his feedback, which is scary and exciting. Yay, I hope he likes it. I know, I hope so too. Hope he responds in time. I know, <laughs> I know. He's like off filming somewhere amazing because <laughs> they're always doing something fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, that looks exciting. Cool. So we have about five minutes left. Chat, if you have more questions for the hoods, please feel free to shout. Yeah, shout them out. I will do my best to read them. Um, Elise says, what about the logo on the top left? Lower the circle and add a horizontal line above it. Let's check it mm. out. On yours. On yours. Oh, on mine. Yeah. Lower the circle and add. So why the horizontal line above it, Elise? I'm just wondering. And if anything, the horizontal line below it to symbolize the, the, the water line mm -hmm. on the horizon, mm -hmm. I think that would make a lot of sense. Yes. But this is like a, a like a, in what? An accent? Accent for like, I guess, certain words. Oh, that's true. But huh. does it apply yeah, down here? Right, does it apply here? But I do like the idea of the line, mm -hmm. to fill in that kind of empty space. Mm -hmm. It's kind of yeah. neat. Or maybe it's more of a rectangle, I don't know. I, mean, I guess you could also do like a few. Oh. I don't know if I like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. Nope, too many lines. Yeah, but this is the beautiful thing about these live streams. People can get their ideas. Totally, it's so fun. Out. Yeah, see what works. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's kind of neat. You know what I mean? Yeah, because that's like the reflection on the water. I like that. Wow. I think that even says reflection on water more to me than what yeah, you're Yeah, than the like, more literal one, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, because if you actually think about a reflection on water, it's yeah. more like the lines, at least in the ripples, totally. and less like the half circle. Yeah, I like that. Interesting. There's Ron, interesting there. Yeah, Ron loves it as well. And Stephanie <laughs> says, I fun. hear a lot of clicks. So many clicks. We're, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, I am using, why am I using that instead of a mouse? <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. I'm like, why am I, I so What am I doing though? to myself? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> so funny. So cool. I'm trying to figure out. I also always try to think about how it'll live on, as an avatar. That's like my oh. other thing. So like, mm. like on know, social media. Social yeah. Media. So like, how will it fit in the circle on Instagram? Mm -hmm. Is you know, do I have to make a different secondary mark that'll you know work for that? Mm -hmm. um, so that's those are kind of things that I always try to think about before I sell sell them on like a certain option. Right. Like that might be tough, but it also might be kind of cool. Like totally. A lot of people might not see a rectangle floating within a circle on Instagram. Yeah, but it actually works pretty good. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty good. Yeah. It reminds me of an owl. Like that little beak. Oh yeah! Oh yeah. my gosh, it totally does. That's so funny. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like where this one's going a lot, actually. <laughs> Nigel and says maybe it should be called vodka fl films. It looks blurry. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, Nigel, have you been day drinking? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Um, Clayton wants to know, do you guys plan to teach professional practices at LCAD again? Oh, well, okay. um, Laguna College of Art and Design is an amazing design college, oh, and it's local to us, and we taught mm -hmm. professional practices there for like four years. It was weird. It flew by. It, flew it was by. amazing, and we loved the students, and it taught us a lot, too. Mm -hmm. But we realized that, like we just kept running out of time, and we would literally like... Uh, it would be come Tuesday, and be like, oh my gosh, we have class today. <laughs> like, we would get our stuff prepared. So we kept getting, um, we just ran out of time, but I wish mm -hmm. we could. But that's why we focused on rewriting the book, too, because we realized we could reach so many more students. Yeah. And it was so affordable. Like, it's way less than paying for then, class. Yeah, like $140,000 for an education. You Woo! Know? Yeah. Uh, or so, however much. Yeah, yes. However much. It is. <laughs> School's expensive. It's crazy. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So we wrote it all down so that anybody could get it. So sorry, Clayton, I don't think we're coming back anytime <laughs> soon, but we do guest le lectures. There. 
we're going to so be... So ask Dana and um, Catherine about a guest lecture. <laughs> and we're going to be doing more tour stops for the workshop. So just check the website. We'll probably be doing a bunch of local ones. There you go. Yeah. Cool. So that is hoodspotdesign.com. Yeah. Yes, hoodspot. Yeah. Perfect. And we're going to be closing out here in just a minute. So if they want to follow you on social media, What's the best way? So we finally got all the same handles. We're at Hudspa yes. Design. We finally did it cool. on Instagram and Twitter is our main thing, but we're also on Facebook sometimes. Awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, mainly yeah. Twitter and <laughs> mainly Twitter and Instagram. Those are our jams, and of course Dribble. I love Dribble. Very um, nice. We've gotten so much work from Dribble, so shout to them. Awesome. Um, yeah. So find us. Definitely DM us if you have any questions. We're starting to use the IGTV more to kind of show oh, process. Oh, nice. So yeah been pretty fun. Awesome. Yeah. So you will be back tomorrow from 1030 and we are going to start with our daily creative challenge here in about five minutes. So if you're interested in learning some quick Photoshop tips, stick around for that and we will have more awesome graphic design coming up after that. So thanks everyone. Thank you Hoods. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.